TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily Local News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTay, coming to you live from Jersey City, New Jersey, and the details of this time. So our first story, President Joe Biden on Monday held his first in-person fundraiser since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, marking a return to a traditional form of politics that many Democrats extrude as a matter of public safety over the past two years. The big dollar event in Washington, which two dozen donors attended, raised at least $3 million for the Democratic National, National Committee, Committee, according to an advisor for the White House who spoke on conditions of amnesty to discuss private planning details. Biden spoke to a group of 18 gathered at the Hotel Washington near the, um, the White House with four other joining by video screen. The president focused his remarks on climate change for the donors, trying, to, trying the issue to other problems such as inflation and Russia's invasion of Ukraine that has caused the oil market to become volatile. On to our next story of the hour. A man who, uh, who signed up for a yoga class in Tallahassee, Florida, and opened fire there in the 2018 had a well-documented history of disturbing behavior, warning signs that were missed. The shooting that left two women dead and wounded six others spotlights the growing concern posed by extremists with hatred towards women, according to the case study the U.S. Secret Service released on Tuesday. The deep look at killings conducted by the Secret Service National Threat Assessment Center was an effort to study how um, contempt for women can radicalize men and spark violent and deadly behavior. The research is aimed at helping to train law enforcement, schools, and community officials to better identify potential attackers and stop them before they strike. Our next story of the hour. Police said early Tuesday they arrested a suspect gunman who has been stalking homeless men asleep on the streets of New York City and Washington, D.C., killing at least two people and wounding three others in less than two weeks. Law enforcement arrested the suspect in Washington, D.C., and he's being interviewed by police. The Metropolitan Police Department said on Twitter, police in the two cities earlier released multiple surveillance photographs, including a close-up snapshot clearly showing the man's face and urge people who might know him to come forward. Additional information will be forthcoming. The statement on Twitter said, thanks to the community for all your tips. On to our next story of the hour. 
A few Americans believe there has been significant progress over the last 50 years in achieving equal treatment for Black people in dealing with the police and the criminal justice system. Most Americans across racial and ethnic groups say more progress is necessary. According to the new polls by the Associated Press, NORC, Center for Public Affairs Research, thoughts the Black Americans, many who have held hold in democratic promises on racial justice initiatives in 2020 are especially pessimistic that any more progress will be made in the coming years. Overall, only about a quarter of Americans say there has been a great deal or a lot of progress in achieving racial equality in policing and criminal justice. Roughly another Another third say there have been some progress. An overwhelming majority of adults say more progress is needed for racial equality, including about half who say a lot more. And now a short break from our daily English news, Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily Local News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTigg, and now the story of the hour. The White House is marking Equal Pay Day by taking new steps aimed at ending the gender pay gap for federal workers and contractors. President Joe Biden on Tuesday is signing an executive order that encourages the government to consider banning federal contracts from seeking information about job applicants' prior salary history, and a new Labor Department directive is aimed at strengthening federal contractors' obligations to audit payroll to help guard against pay disparities based on gender, race, or ethnicity. The Office of Personnel Management also is considering a regulation to address the use of prior salary history in hiring and setting compensation for federal workers. Equal Pay Day is designed to call attention to how much longer women must work to earn what men earn in the previous years. On to our next story. Face-to-face, President Joe Biden's national security advisors warned a top Chinese um, official on Monday about China's support for Russia in Ukrainian invasion. Even as the Kremlin denied reports, it had requested Chinese military equipment to use in the war. U.S. advisor Jake Sullivan and senior Chinese foreign policy advisor Yang Yechi met in Rome with the Biden administration increasingly concerned that China is using the Ukraine war to advance Beijing's long-term interest in its competition with the United States. Sullivan was seeking clarity on Beijing's posture and was warning the Chinese knew that assistance for Russia, including helping in avert sanctions imposed by the U.S. and Western allies, would be costly for them.
on to our next story of the hour. More than two weeks into a war he expected to dominate in two days, Vladimir Putin is projecting anger, frustration at his military's failures and a willingness to cause even more, even more violence, violence and destruction, and destruction in, in Ukraine, Ukraine in the assessment of the U.S. intelligence officials. Officials in recent days have publicly said they are worried that the Russian president will escalate the conflict to try to break Ukraine's resistance. Russia still holds overwhelmingly military advantages and can bombard the country for weeks more. And while the rest of the world reacts to the horrific images of the war he started, Putin remains insulated from the domestic pressures by what the CIA director William Burns called a propaganda bubble. On to our next story, the hour of Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will deliver virtual address this week to the U.S. Congress, part of a series of high-profile speeches from a leader working to rally support as the Russian invasion of his country intensifies. Zelensky will speak Wednesday to members of the House and Senate, an event that will be live streamed for the public. It follows an address he delivered last week to the UK Parliament that carried echoes of the Winston Churchill stirring world, um, words during World War II. On Tuesday, Zeminski is scheduled to deliver a speech to Canada's Parliament. It's such a privilege to have this leader of this country where these people are fighting for their democracy and our democracy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Monday during an event at the Brooklyn Bridge with New York lawmakers. Pelosi says Zelensky asked for the meeting when they spoke at the end of last week, and lawmakers are thrilled to have him address Congress. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. There's more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTague, and now the stories of this hour. Russia's relentless bombardment of Ukraine edged closer to central Kiev as a series of strikes hit a residential neighborhood Tuesday, while the leaders of three European Union countries planned a bold visit to Ukraine's capital and a number of people the war has driven from the country past 3 million. Large explosions thundered across Kiev before dawn from what Ukrainian authorities said was artillery strikes as Russia assaults on the city appeared to become more systematic. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said brigades hit four a barrage hit four multi-story buildings in the city and caused dozens of deaths. The strikes target a western district of Kiev, disrupting a 
relative calm that returned after an initial advance by Russian forces was stopped in the early days of the war. Tuesday shelling ignited a huge fire in a 15-story apartment building and spurred a frantic rescue effort. On to our next story. When Afra Hashim thinks back about living, living through, through the, the siege, siege of, of Apollo, Apollo, uh, uh, Aleppo, she remembers how inventive everyone was. In the late 2016, Syrian government forces had sailed off Aleppo's rebel-held eastern half with 270,000 people inside for months. They and Russian warplanes blasted to rubble. Foods were scarce. Hashim's family, like others, was largely surviving off of one meal a day. One day, her eldest son, Usam, 11 at the time, asked out of nowhere, Mommy, can we have fish? Her three kids didn't even like fish. But when you have almost nothing, you miss even things you didn't like, she recalled. Unwilling to cave in to the despair, Hashim fried up moldy bread, found some coriander, garlic, and Aleppo's famed red pepper flakes, and he told them it was tilapia. Together, they all pretended it was fish. The The kids kids even said they could taste it. It wasn't just me, but all the women in Aleppo were were doing these inventions to feed their children, she said. On to our next story of the hour. So the U.S. says Russia has asked China to provide military assistance for its war in Ukraine and that China has responded affirmatively. But both Moscow and Beijing have denied the allegations with the Chinese spokesperson dismissing it as disinformation. Still, the, the claims have generated a conjecture over how far Beijing will be willing to go in backing its most important strategic partner. As China's foreign ministers recently described Russia, following initial reports that Russia had asked China for military aid, unnamed U.S. officials say that the Washington had determined that China has sent a signal to Russia. Beijing will be willing to provide both military support for the campaign in Ukraine and financial backing to help stave off the impacts of severe sanctions imposed by the West. At a meeting in Rome on Monday, National Security Advisor Jay Sullivan warned senior Chinese foreign policy advisor Zhang Zhexi against providing such support, even as the Kremlin denied requesting military equipment. On to our next story at the hour, going to South Korea. After winning a bitterly contest presidential election, South Korean conservative Yoon Suk Yeol will enter office facing a quickly growing North Korean nuclear threat and with few easy choices ahead to deal with it. A former prosecutor with no foreign policy experience who kick-started his political career nine months ago, you will face a turbulent moment in global affairs and the decades-old standoff with North, over which many experts say Seoul is having lost leverage under the policies of outgoing President Moon Jae-in. It appears you will be tested quickly, possibly even before he starts his presidency in May. North Korea often attempts to rattle new administrations in the Washington or Seoul with major weapons demonstrations and has been signaling a resumption of long-range missile testings this year. Yoon, who narrowly beat it out of the liberal ruling party rival in last week's election, was rejected um, pursuing talks for talks sake and vowed to be a sterner with a um, Pyongyang as North as accelerating weapons test in 2022 shows a renewed strategy of brinkmanship 
to pressure Washington and Seoul into giving its badly needed relief from economic sanctions. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24 7. Stay tuned, there's more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTague, and now at this hour, the stories. China's new COVID-19 case Tuesday more than doubled from the previous days as the country faces by far its biggest outbreak since the early days of the pandemic. The National Health Commission said 3,507 new local locally spreaded cases have been identified in the latest 24-hour period up from 1,337 a day earlier. A fast-spreading variant known as the stealth Omicron is testing China's zero-tolerance strategy, which had kept the virus at bay since the daily initial outbreak in the city of Wuhan in the early 2020. China has recorded more than 10,000 cases in the first two weeks of March far exceeding previous flare-ups. No new deaths have been reported in multiple outbreaks across China, and the case counts remains low compared to many other places in the world. The UK recorded more than 444,000 um, cases in the past week. Hong Kong, a sem semi-autonomous city that tracks its outbreak separately from the mainland, reported 26,908 new cases on Monday alone. On to our next story of the hour. While Russia's war in Ukraine dominates global attention, Myanmar's military is targeting civilians in air and ground attacks on a scale unmatched in a country since World War II, according to a longtime relief worker who spent almost three months in a combat zone in the Southeast Asian nation. David Ibank, director of the Free Burman Rangers, a humanitarian relief organization, told the Associated Press that the military jets and helicopters stage frequent attacks in the areas of eastern Myanmar, where he and his volunteers operate, bringing medical and food aid to civilians caught in the conflict. Ground forces are also firing auto artillery uh, indiscriminately he said, causing thousands to flee their homes. Videos shot by his group members include rare images of repeated airstrikes by Myanmar, military aircrafts in Kaya State, also known as the uh, Karini State, causing a number of civilians' deaths. Next story of the hour. So while you while Russia's oh wait uh, the International Olympics Co Committee 
has always been political from Sikhs and royals in its membership to a seat at the United Nations to Christian for a peace talk between Korea. The Russian invasion of Ukraine three weeks ago exposed his irreconcilable claim of the political neutrality. The IOC's politicals were evident at Hitler's 1936 Olympics. During the Cold War, the games were staged for conflict in Mexico City, violence in Munich, and boycotts in Moscow. To this day, the IOC has partnered with authoritarian states like China and Russia, beginning with the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics through the doping scare uh, Sochi Games to just close Beijing Winter Olympics. The yawning gaps exist between what the IOC has long existed. It is the very heart of world sports, a view that you closer to reality a non-profit sports business based in Switzerland that generates about 90% of its income from selling broadcast rights and sponsorships. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. There's very much more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7, daily no local news update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTague. And now, more stories of the hour. Nine people died in a fiery head-on collision in West Texas, including six students and a coach from New Mexico University who were returning home from a golf tournament, authorities say. A pickup truck crossed the center lane of the two-lane road in Andrews County, about three miles east of the New Mexico state line, on Tuesday evening and crashed into a van carrying members of the United States of Universities of Southwest men and women's golf team, said Sergeant Stevens Blanco of the Texas Department of Police Safety. Six students and faculty members were killed in the crash along with the driver and passenger in the pickup truck, Blanco said. Two students, Two students were, taken were taken in critical, critical condition, condition by a helicopter to a hospital, hospital in Lubbock, about 110 miles to the Northeast. Family members confirmed freshman Lacey Stone was among those who died in the crash. Stone graduated from Nogona High School in Texas in 2021, where she played golf, volleyball, and softball. On to our next story. Texas threw out mail votes at an abnormally high rate during the nation's first primary of 2022 rejecting nearly 23,000 ballots outright under tougher voting rules that are part of a board campaign by Republicans to reshape Americans' election, according to the analysis by the Associated Press. 
Roughly 13% of the mail ballots returned in March 1st primary were discarded and uncounted across 187 counties in Texas. While historical primary um, comparisons are lacking, the double digit rejection rate would be far beyond what is typical in a general election. When experts say anything about 2% is usually cause for attention. My first reaction is yikes. So Charles Stitt III, Director of the Election Data and Science Lab at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, it says to me that there's something seriously wrong with the way that the mail ballot policy is being administered. On to our next story of the hour. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky um, summoned the memory of Pearl Harbor and the September 11, 2001 terror attacks in appealing Wednesday to the U.S. Congress to do more to help Ukrainian fight against Russia. President Joe Biden said the U.S. is sending more anti-aircrafts and anti-armored weapons and drones. Zelensky live streamed to the rap audience of lawmakers on a giant screen acknowledge the no-fly zone he has sought to close the skies to airstrikes on his country may not happen. Biden has resisted that, as well as a proof for the U.S. or NATO to send MIG fighter jets from Poland. Instead, Zelensky pleaded for other military aides to stop the Russian assault. Biden described his help. He was already prepared to announce, he said, to the U.S. will be sending an additional $800 million in military assistance, making a total of $2 billion in such aid sent to Kyiv since he took office more than a year ago. About $1, million, $1 billion in aid has been sent in the past week. Biden said new assistance include 800 Stingers anti-aircraft systems, 100 grenade launchers, 2 million rounds of small arm ammunition and grenade launchers and mortar rounds and unspecific numbers of drones. We're going to give Ukraine the arms to fight and defend themselves through all the difficult days ahead, Biden said. Biden spoke hours after Zelensky delivered a video address to members of the U.S. Congress in which he made an impassionate plea for the U.S. and the West to provide more help to save his young democracy than world leaders have so far pleaded to provide. Pledge to provide. On to our next story of the hour. An Afghan refugee in the United States will be allowed to stay for at least 18 months under temporary protected status, the government said Wednesday, a move that will help some of the thousands who have arrived following the chaotic American withdrawal from, the, from their country. The Afghans must already be in the U.S. and pass a background check to qualify for the program, which is intended to help thousands who were evacuated to the U.S. under a short-term status known as the humanitarian parole as their country fell to the Taliban. For many, however, time is running out because they have not yet received permanent residency through the backlogs programs, such as a special immigration visa, which is issued to people who work as interpreters or in some other capacity for the U.S. and its allies during the 20-year war. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned, there is more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV.
Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily Local News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTague, and now continuing the stories. Historically Black colleges and universities victimized by the recent bomb threats are now eligible for federal grants under a program designed to help improve campus security and provide mental health resources. Vice President Kamala Harris was sent to announce Wednesday a day after her husband tested positive for COVID-19, Harris was sent to appear with the Attorney General Merrick Garland, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, and Homeland Security Deputy Sec Secretary John Tian to discuss public safety across the United States. The Vice President was expected to announce that historically Black colleges and universities, or HBCUs, that were victimized by the spat of recent bomb threats can now apply for grant funding under the Project School Emergency Response to Violence Program at the U.S. Education Department to improve campus security and provide mental health resources. Our next story of the hour. A Senate committee has approved a bipartisan blueprint to overhaul the nation's public health system, applying the lessons of COVID-19 to future outbreaks through a new chain of command and a strong medical supply chain and a clear crisis communication. The Health, Education, Labor, Pensions Committee approved the Pre Prevent Pandemic Act by a vote of 22 Tuesday, but it's only a first step. If the ambitious vision does eventually pass, pass Congress, Congress, lawmakers must still deliver the tens of billions of dollars it will take to translate it into reality and maintain focus after the coronavirus recedes. Right now, Congress is even having trouble meeting a White House request for additional funds to keep COVID-19 at bay the rest of this year. We, we owe it to everyone who has worked so hard to address the challenges of this pandemic to make sure that we are never in this situation like this again, says Senator Patty Murray, Democratic Washington, Chair of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension Committee. Our next story. Both Russia and Ukraine project optimism ahead of another scheduled round of talks Wednesday, even as Moscow forces, forces rain fire in Kiev and other major cities and bid to crush the resonance that has frustrated the Kremlin's hopes for a lightning victory. In the encircled seaport of, of Marpool, Marpool, the Russian, Russian air airstrikes air destroyed, destroyed a theater building, building where hundreds, hundreds of people were sheltering, the city council said. There was no immediate word on deaths or injuries. In Kiev's residents huddle in homes and shelters amid a citywide curfew that runs until Thursday morning as Russia shells areas in and around the city. A 12-story apartment building in central Kiev erupted in flames after being hit by a sharp note. And 10 people were killed while standing in line for bread in the northern city of Shonhiv. And Ukrainian General Prosecutor's Office said. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, meanwhile, went before the U.S. Congress via video invoking the Pearl Harbor and 9-11 plea with America for more weapons and tougher sanctions against Russia, saying, we need you right now. U.S. President Joe Biden later announced the United States is sending an additional 800 million dollars in military aid to Ukraine, including more anti-aircraft and anti-tank weapons and drones. Our next story. Every, every other hour, another packed train from Poland arrives at Berlin's main train station filled with hundreds of Ukrainian refugees mostly mothers and their children looking for a safe place away from the brutal war in their home country. As they spill out of the trains on Tuesdays, 
Loud speakers blare in Ukrainian and English. Dear refugees from Ukraine, welcome to Germany. Please follow the instructions of the volunteers in the yellow and orange vest. Spread across the platform, a small army of volunteers in bright colored vests appear. Yellow for those who speak German, English, and other languages. Orange for Ukrainian and Russian speakers. Ready to maneuver the exhausted masses through the maze of Berlin's sleek and shiny glass and steel railway stations into building basements. The operation runs so smoothly that it seemingly endless streams of refugees goes largely unnoticed to the city's tens of thousands of regular commuters making their way through the station's five levels. Most don't even, most don't even know of the sprawling refugees towns that have sprung up in the station's basements. And now a short break from the Daily English News of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned. There is much, much more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530 Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTague. And now the stories of the hour. There's so much going on. So the United Nations highest court on Wednesday ordered Russia to stop hostilities in Ukraine, granting measures requested by Kyiv, although many are skeptical that Russia will comply. Two weeks ago, Ukraine asked the International Court of Justice, also known as the World Court, to intervene, arguing Russia violated the 1978 Genocide Convention by falsely, falsely accusing Ukraine of committing genocide and using that as a pretext for the ongoing invasion. The Russian Federation shall immediately suspend the special military operations it commenced on the 24th of February, 2022. The court's president U.S. Judge Joan E. Donahue said, countries who refuse to abide by court orders can be referred to the U.N. Security Council where Russia holds veto power. Still, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky hailed it as a major victory. Ukraine gained a complete victory in its case against Russia at the International Court of Justice. He wrote on Twitter, the ICJ ordered to immediately stop the invasion. The order is binding under international law. Russia must comply immediately. Ignoring the order will isolate Russia even further. On to our next story of the hour. The Council of Europe on Wednesday expelled Russia from the continent's foremost human rights body in an unprecedented move over Moscow's invasion and war in Ukraine. The 47 nations organized a committee of ministers said in a statement that the Russian Federation ceases to be a member of the Council of Europe as from today. 
heard that, heard right. that right. In a, in a highly, highly symbolic, symbolic move, move after, after the decisions, decisions Council, Council of Europe staff went outside of its headquarters to Strasbourg and took down the Russian flag, neatly folding the tricolor before it was taken away. Despite pumps, it was an unceremonious end to the 26 years of membership in the group, but many said it was fully deserved. Tiny Knox, the president of Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe said an explosion was necessary and I'm glad we dared to do so. On to our next story of the hour. The morning began with a pair of caskets, one open and one shut. Lined in white fabric, they held two of the Ukrainian fighters killed in Russia's invasion. Here in a gray village under the gray sky near the western border of Poland, there were the first reminders that the war could come this far. The men were killed Sunday when Russian missiles struck a military base nearby Yevoriv, a hub of military corporations between Ukraine and NATO countries. At least 35 people died in all. Until then, this part of Ukraine had been spared, a witness only to the exhausting flow of hundreds of thousands of refugees heading from the border. Bright billboards urging war readiness had been raised. On lonely roads between winter's barren fields of sunflowers and corn, villagers erected sandbags and checkpoint bottles of a Molotov cocktail stacked behind them. On to our next story. A year ago, Naftali Bennett was struggling for his political survival as Israel headed towards its fourth consecutive election. Today, the Israeli Prime Minister is at the forefront of global efforts to end the war in Ukraine. Just as Bennett took advantage of unique circumstances to become the most unlikely of prime ministers, he has managed to leverage Israel's good relations with both Ukraine and Russia and his personal rapport with their leaders to turn himself into an unexpected mediator. Although he has not yet delivered any major diplomatic breakthroughs, he is one of a few world leaders to speak regularly to both sides, providing a rare glimmer of hope for ending the three-week war. Bennett himself has said little in public about his mediation since making a surprise visit to Moscow for talks with President Vladimir Putin on March 5th. His office says there has been two more phone calls with Putin and six with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Now a short break from our daily English news of Millennium News 24-7. Stay tuned, there is more. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV.
Welcome to Millennium News 24-7 Daily News Update. I'm your host, Jasmine McTagg, with so much stories to tell you. Our next story of the hour, think of the Kennedys and some elitist attributes come to mind. Wealth, power, influence, hell against. But the great-grandparents of John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy possess none of those things. And the family's imparable journey from obscurity in Ireland to eventual prosperity and celebrity in the U.S. offers hope to America's latest arrivals from Afghanistan, Ukraine, and beyond. In the first Kennedys, released last month by HarperCollins um, Mariner Books, Author Neil Thompson explores the little known stories of Bridge Murphy Kennedy and Patrick Kennedy, both independently fled famine in their homelands in the mid 1800s, fell in love in fiercely anti-immigration Boston and paved the way for the Kennedy's political dynasty that followed. Our next story of the hour Sarah Burton brought to the house of Alexander McQueen to town for the first time in 23 years with a runway show staged Tuesday night amid huge piles of wood chips arranged in a barren Brooklyn warehouse. Mycelium and buzzy mushroom alternative to leather was on Burton's mind as a theme and touches invoking the fungi were sewn or woven into some of her autumn winter looks, but none of it was used to make the clothes. The successor to Lee Alexander McQueen's told journalists after the show that she'll still be experimenting with a sustainable mushroom leather and other alternatives sticking to the real thing for now. Burton opened with a asymmetrical bustier dress in black leather, inter suppressing other black looks with pops of neon yellow, green, red, and orange. There were white double breast suits with a spray paint effect in yellow and black, and then another in the same vein done in red. Harken back to McQueen's famous spring 1999 show in which model model Shalom Harlow's dress was adorned with paint to dispense from moving robots. On to our next story. Novak uh, Djokovic will be allowed to play at the French Open even if he is not vaccinated against COVID-19 as long as the coronavirus situation in France remains stable, organizers said Wednesday. Russian tennis player, including top-ranked Daniil uh, Medvedev, will also be admitted to play in the tournament, but as neutral athletes because of the war started by their country in neighboring Ukraine. Organizers said there is nothing at the moment preventing Djokovic from defending his title at the Clay Court Grand Slam. France this week lifted measures requiring the need to wear face masks in most settings and allowing people who aren't vaccinated back into restaurants, sports, arenas, and other venues. At this stage, there is nothing to stop him returning to the courts. French Open director Amelia um, Maurice Small said at a news conference. And for our final story, Ryan Howard has joined an executive group by becoming the three-time Associated Press All-American. The Kentucky senior became the ninth player in the women's basketball history to earn the first team honors three times, getting a spot on the team announced Wednesday. That's huge. Definitely selective company to be a three-time and one of nine. Now that's something you had to work for, Howard said. I don't know how to explain it. I was glad I was able to accomplish that. Howard was joined on the first team by South Carolina's um, Aaliyah Boston, 
Iowa's Caitlin Clark, Baylor's Nalisa Smith, Michigan's Nas Hillman, and Stanford's Haley Jones. Hillman and Jones tie for the fifth spot. Boston's Clark and Smith were anonymous, unanimous choice from the three-member national media panel that votes in the AP Top 25 each week. It was the first time that there has been a tie for the first team since AP started honoring women All-American in 1995. And this was your local news update of Millennium News 24-7. Log in to get the latest news. All of our social net, social networking sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, is Millennium News 24. Our YouTube channel is News Channel M24. Viewers now on both network broadcasting Android, iOS devices, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, also all smart TV platforms. Please enjoy our entertainment and latest news and views. Our Millennium TV app, Millennium TV USA, Android, and Millennium News Google, www.millenniumnews24.com. Stay with Millennium News 24-7, and thank you for watching.